And she's counting down. We're just going to keep talking as if. That's totally fine. Yeah. Are we on right now? Or did, were you just holding up the thing? Oh, so we're on now? We've yeah, been we're live. For 10 seconds. You guys are live. Well, you know what? We're just going to continue this conversation and pretend that there's no one here because I think that's, that's fantastic. But um, I Hello, guess we should do Hello, everybody. Things. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, early afternoon. I am Corey. I'm from Vroman's Bookstore. And today I have the pleasure of introducing Jonathan Stutzman. Stut Stutzman or Stutzman? I don't know. It doesn't Either. matter? It doesn't matter. I usually say the Stutzman same thing. Stutzman sounds studier. Stutzman. I, I, I say Stutzman, so. Stutzman. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Jonathan or Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. I'm ready for it. I'm glad I'm not drinking any coffee. It'd just be spitting at the screen. Right. right. Um, before we get going, everybody who has joined us, if you have yet to purchase your book, there's a little button at the bottom of your screen, and it says purchase book with signed book plates. We have signed book plates for your book. So put that in the book order, in the comments of the book order that you want the signed book plate. There's the book. And then there's also going to be time for Q&A. And there's a button also at the bottom of your screen that says, ask a question. Put your questions there. That way we get to all of them. Thanks. And then I'm going to introduce our guests. Dan Santana has illustrated over 120 books. He originally attended the University of California for a degree in microbiology. After graduating, he decided to act on his love of art and enrolled in the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. He took on jobs in various art industries until reaching the world of children's illustration, <clears throat> where he has stayed and thrived. He, has, he is also the creator of the Disney animated show, The Replacements. Okay, Jonathan Stutzman, <clears throat> devoured books and comics as a child. Let's see. And now he writes his own stories for other children to explore the world of reading. He especially enjoys his story time. He is the author of Bear is a Bear, The, Night's, the Night is for Darkness, Don't Feed the Coos, and many other books for children. He lives in Pennsylvania with his wife. Do you have any pets? I do. I have a pet, Hugo. He's a French uh, French bulldog. Oh, so he lives with his bulldog and his wife. Oh, my gosh. And his name's Hugo? Yeah. Dan, do you have any pets? I have three dogs, uh, Pee Wee, Chewy, and Indiana. I have two <laughs> cats, Tigra and Ray. And then we have uh, a nice little pineapple conure uh, named Tiki. Um, my my wife wants to get a goat. Like my wife wants to get a goat. She's like crazy for animals. She wants to get a goat, and I don't even know. I don't even know where you begin. I don't even know where you start In to the get backyard. a goat. But like, do you go to like the county fair and bid for one at the 4-H and just be like, I want this goat. I don't have any plans <laughs> other than to have it like eat all the lawn. I don't know. But no, I know I'm you're right. Find a way to get her away from animal. I mean, I love animals, but she loves animals. She's... Well, goats are uh, cool. My I wife had goat. her a long ago too. So yeah, what is going on? You know, and there's like this whole hedgehog business. Everyone's showing pictures of their hedgehogs. Or if you go That's on so YouTube, cute. you're finding all these people like, oh, the pet owl, and you're like, where does one get an owl <laughs> or a fox? Like, oh, here's my pet fox in my bed, and I'm feeding it Oreos. You're just like, who are these people in this world? Where do you even begin to get a fox? Craigslist. <laughs> one used <laughs> fox. <laughs> Baby foxes for sale in the animal section? Pets? Pet part? I don't know. Yeah, my wife would show up just like, I'd like two, please. <laughs> Dan, right, pick well, it up. Hand, <laughs> I'm going to hand this over to the two of you. In, All um, right. In, okay. Um, how do I do this? All right. How are you? I'm doing great, Dan. How are you doing? So I'm trying to think of the first time we met. It was at the LA Times Festival of Books. That was uh, 2018. 
maybe uh, maybe 2019. I think that's when the year my first book came out. I'm okay. The fall before that, I'm not sure. Yeah, and then you were you and I were on the main stage. You had that, yeah. You introduced yourself. I'm trying to remember if it was the green room or wherever. But yes, I said, "What a nice, charming man." Hopefully, someday we'll get to work together on a project. And lo and behold, here we are, three years later, amidst amidst this pandemic. And you know, I mean, it would have been wonderful if you were able to come out to Romans, and then we could all hang out, and then we could have all gone to Disneyland afterwards. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we have to mingle with all these fine people who are from apparently all over the planet. There's there's someone from the UK. Hello. Uh, North Carolina, uh, all over the place. Pasadena. Oh, my gosh. What's that like? Um, but today we're talking about our wonderful book, Bears a Bear, uh, which you which you wrote. And uh, I was luckily enough to illustrate and so perhaps it would be great if we begin by uh, reading the book. I have it on, uh, I have it here on a digital presentation, and I would like, I would like to hear it in your beautiful, sultry voice, if that's, if that's okay. And then I'll just, I'll just... my best to be sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'll just turn the pages for you. You know, just uh, lick my finger and. Uh, we'll well, I would love to read it, and uh, it's it was. Awesome just being able to uh, make this book with you and that we get to share it with people from all over the world, which is really cool. Um, the best part of virtual events, I, I love in-person events too, but it's cool that we got people from all over that we might never have uh, talked to before. So yeah, right. we got Bear is a Bear. I wrote it and illustrated it. And if you have any Friends, family that you want to cuddle up, ready for story time, maybe some stuffies. Is that your bear, Dan? This is my bear. And, you know, everyone has a name for their bear. I was not that creative. My my bear's name is Bear. And uh, I'll tell you a little story about it afterwards. But uh, there, there was a part where I realized. <laughs> I'll just tell you later. It's a funny story. Okay. This is my bear. Well, I got my bear, too. My bear, um, I had, I think I got it on the day of my birth. And um, it's also not a creative name, but I might have to blame my parents for that one. because They're probably the ones who named it as they like played with me with it. Uh, <laughs> so, this is Teddy. Um, I'll go into some more of my stuffed animals that I got. I got a whole uh, stuffed animal chair here. I have a lot more than that, but um, well, first we'll get to the book. This All is right. Bear is a Bear. Dan will be showing you his awesome art and right. reading. So Are you ready here to go? Here we go. All right. You see that? All right. Let's there is a bear. Written by Jonathan Stutzman, illustrated by Dan Santa. Perfect. Okay, tiny page. Here we go. Bear is a bear, hopeful and shy. Bear is a bear, full of love. See, the mom is ready to introduce the bear to the little kid. Bear is a new friend. They look like they are ready to have some fun times. Bear is a snack. Bear is a tissue. Ew. Feel bad for my bear now if I did that to him. Bear is a soft warm pillow. Bear is a bear covered in fuzz. Bear is a bear full of love. That looks so cozy. Bear is a fancy lady. They both are super fancy. They're ready to have a tea party. Bear is a pirate. Arr. Bear is a ghost. Look how spooky they look. Crack out. Big lightning thunder and thunderstorm going on right there. They look a little afraid. Bear is a brave protector. Bear is a bear, steadfast and snug. Bear is a bear, full of love. Ah, oh, he's there. She's there protecting him. Bear is a bold explorer. 
I do not think mom is going to like that. Bear is a bookworm. Bear is an artist. I think we're both bookworms, Ben. Oh, yeah. Bear is a best friend. Look at that amazing art they made together. Bear is a bear covered in chalk. Bear is a bear full of love. You can see the little girl is growing up. Bear is a scientist. Bear is a dreamer. This is one of my favorite pages because I love the stars. Beautiful. Bear is a tissue. The bear is a tissue again, but look the type of tissue bear is this time. She's reading Little Women and got to a really sad part and he's there to comfort her. Bear is a soft, warm pillow. Bear is a bear, aging and worn. Bear is a bear, full of love. The little girl is now all grown up. She looks like she's graduating high school. And Bear is right by her side still. So. Now the girl's at college. Bear is a piece of home. Bear is a scholar. They're working hard on their homework and studying. Bear is a nice reminder of her home. Bear is a distraction. She's going off to do other things and leaving Bear at the dorm. Bear is a memory. Aw. Bear is a bear covered in dust. Bear is a bear full of love. Look at Bear is now in the chest and it's She's all um, put away with all the childhood things, the toys, the telescope that used to look at stars, and you can see even the table they had tea parties at. But Bear is remembered. Bear is an old friend. There's the little girl now. She's a woman, but she's still having a beautiful moment with her old friend there. They're having a tea party again. What happens next? The girl now has her own daughter now that she's grown up. And they brought out the tea party set and they're ready to have a little tea party with a new friend. Bear says bye and hello to a new friend. Bear is a new friend. Bear is a soft, warm pillow. Bear is a bear faded and torn. Bear is a bear full of love. Bear is bear. As you can see, it was a teddy bear the whole time. And bear is now cuddled up with her new friend, the daughter of the first girl that she met at the beginning. So they passed it on and now they can have new adventures together. That is Bear's a Bear, written by me, illustrated by Dan Santat. And those illustrations were beautiful. Dan, would you like to tell us um, how you created them or any? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. So, um, you know, a couple treats, couple things that were, were hinted in the book. Um, so when, when I got this manuscript from Jonathan, um, it actually resembled one that I was working on. Uh, and I really liked the idea of this girl interacting with um, you know, a creature, but kind of in a way that just seemed completely normal. Like, oh, here's a girl playing with this giant bear. Um, but revealing at the end that it was something else. And so 
when I was originally working on the story, uh, I had presented it in a way straightforward as to what Jonathan was presenting. And, um, you know, you would have these, you would have these moments where this girl is interacting with this little teddy bear. But um, there was something about the last sequence in the book where, uh, you know, the bear comes out of the chest and then she has a moment where she wants to give it to her daughter. And um, I wanted to really pull in this emotional uh, moment where you kind of get to see this, this stuffed animal's reaction to the whole thing. And I wasn't able to capture that with just a stuffed animal, right? So I decided to personify it with like this really active uh, giant bear. And, and so I remember showing it to the editor and really just kind of emailing the editor and saying, look, I have this idea that's a little bit out there, uh, but I'm going to try to express it in a full dummy and see if it works with you. Uh, but also I would probably need like an extra four to six pages if that's okay. And I did the whole thing uh, laid out the scene and, you know, it, I, you know, it, it landed and I think everybody was happy and, and it just worked out to be fine. And, you know, it was just, it was a great way for me to be able to work on this manuscript and, uh, kind of, kind of go vicariously through Jonathan's words, which, you know, were fantastic. And so, you know, I had some alternate openings, uh, for instance, I thought that the bear would come in a little, uh, gift box, uh, <laughs> And what I, I really like the idea that it was like a little tiny gift box, but then there's a giant bear in, inside it, uh, which kind of played it out as a little surreal. Um, but, you know, for us, I don't know, I think the reveal of it actually being a teddy bear at the end was, was a very magical, you know, moment at that last page turn. And so, you know, I decided I wanted to hold my cards pretty closely and I thought this gave a little too much away. But um, I do, I do find this, I do find this uh, illustration pretty charming. Uh, but then we also felt like there was something important about um, having the mom introduce the bear to the family. So uh, this didn't quite land the way we wanted it to. But I did love this illustration of the bear uh, just cozying up to uh, the little girl. And you know, it's funny because this was like this. This is uh, this is a uh, actually a. Um, a gesture that one of my dogs makes when he wants to play or he wants to be very submissive. Um, like for example, I have a very big dog, his name is Indiana. And uh, when we introduced uh, one of our smaller dogs, uh, this, was a, this was a pose that he did to show that he was completely submissive, just like he was not, he was friendly. And so I was actually inspired by my dog's gesture toward, towards one of the pups uh, when he first introduced himself. So that's where that idea came from. Um, and then here, so here's here's what the, the the moment ended up becoming, where the mom uh, brings in the bear for for the child, uh, and and it worked out very well. And you know, we we again we get to we get to see the mom and um, Jonathan. So I, I I don't remember where it was, but I, I remember you mentioning that you had mentioned something about your mother online. And, and for some reason I thought, you know, what a great way to honor her than to kind of incorporate her into the illustrations of the book. Um, and I guess it was based off of the fact that I think you were just talking about how your mom was just really responsible for your upbringing. And I, I assume like, you know, she gave you your first bear, like, you know, like mine. And, and uh, you know, that was, that was something that I kind of worked in and I thought, okay, well, you'll see it in the sketches. And I don't know, did you initially kind of look at it and say like, oh, that's my mom? Or did no, someone have I, to play like, that's I, your mom? Um, actually knew that it was that until you told me. Yeah. yeah it's never had, like, it never crossed my mind that you would do that, um, which uh, when you you told me uh, when we were presenting it with Harper Collins, and I was just like so touched because mm -hmm. the story to me is not just like, a child and their stuffed animal, but it's also like what um, my mom passed on to me, which uh, she gave me my stuffy, but she also was the one that cultivated my creativity um, by interacting, like 
doing voices with the stuffed animals and which I then took as I became older and had, a, um, I could kind of do that on my own. And I went and I had voices for all my stuffed animals and I lived all these amazing adventures and stories out in my head. And I really think that's a huge part of why I'm a writer now. Um, it started so young and her putting that love and attention into creativity and um, just having that childlike sense of wonder at the world. Like I wanted to kind of incorporate that into the book. Um, mm -hmm. so, so the book was in my mind kind of about like what mothers pass on to their children. And then I don't know if I had told that, told you that in the notes, but then you went and put my mom in there and I was like, this is amazing. And actually my nickname is John Bear to her when I was a little oh, kid. Oh, got it. So uh, it's, it, it worked so well. I, I loved it. My mom's nickname for me is Dummy. Hey, Dummy, <laughs> take out the trash. <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's cute. You're John Bear. That's nice. <laughs> anyway, no. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I think the I think the the, the sentiment was translated to uh, to me from the editor as well. Like you know, the handing of. The handing of you know a, a bear from one mother to another mother to another child like it just it worked perfectly it worked really well um so yeah that's so that's that's really the essence of that was really the essence of the, the you know the process of of making the book um and uh you know like i don't i don't how when you wrote the manuscript, like how long ago, how long ago did you write it and how long did you have to go back and forth with the editor before it was good to go? Um, it, it came pretty quickly. It is kind of simple. Um, just it's, it's pretty simple text wise, but it is hard sometimes to get the, the simple, the very simple things to work cohesively. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, this was one of like the fastest ones that ever came together. Okay. Um, I was just at a bookstore in in their little cafe working, and I think I wrote the <laughs> the skeleton of it in about like thirty minutes, and then I like <laughs> it, it. It never takes that short. It, it, yeah. I've been working on ones for like two years that like ha still haven't come together. So it was just like worked, and I think I changed took out a few things that Bear was to work with the pacing in different sections uh, with my agent. And then we sent it out, um, I think like the next week. So okay. it all went very fast on that side, which it never happens that way. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I've told you this, but I haven't told our, our lovely audience right now, but you were like one of the inspirations for me to get into kids books uh, when I was working with my, girlfriend at the time, now my wife, Heather Fox, who uh, I, she illustrates lots of books. Um, I do a lot of books with her. Um, we, she was still in college and we were like trying to figure out like, hey, let's try to do this, make our own little book for one of our college projects just for fun. And I went in to the bookstore with her um, in Kutztown, I think. Um, yeah, in Kutztown uh, where she was going to school and we found your book on the shelf and I was like looking through it. I was like, this is amazing. And that book was Beagle, which is still one of my favorite books. Oh, thank you. I, coming from a film background, I, I went to school for film for co in college and I got my master's in it. This like felt like a whole animated movie. I could like see you coming from that like cinematic uh, perspective that like, and that's why it like hit so hard for me. I was like, whoa, this is amazing. This like should be a Disney movie or a Pixar movie or uh, it just like opened the door, I think, to my imagination that like I could take some of these short film ideas that I have that like would never be possible just for me to say like to animated studios. Here, I wrote this short film uh, <laughs> right. a feature and the, it would never become a story. And I found this as a gateway to be able to take that Im imagination and make stories that could be something. So Beagle was like this, it opened the door to me and uh, Heather and I then like 
we're looking or like reading it tons of times and we were like studying page turns in it and we got more books out and we just fell in love with the pic picture books um and we got into picture books from there so thank you dan for oh, yes. my gateway drug to picture books um and i got beeple over here with my stuffies oh look at that i didn't even know they made a narwhal one i see you have narwhal behind there that's ben clanton's right yeah i love Ben Clanton and uh, Narwhal and Jelly. That's from Mary Makers. Oh, okay. I was wondering. That's pretty fantastic. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Narwhal series by Ben Clanton, they're fantastic. He, uh, he's an Eisner winning uh, author. Actually, so I, I, I remember I was invited to an event, uh, SCBWI in Portland, and that's where I met Ben Clanton, and he had never been published before. And I looked through his portfolio because he, he, he did one of these portfolio reviews, and I remember looking at it just thinking like, Oh, it's just a matter of time. Like you just need to like go out there and submit stuff, and before you know it. And so you know, I'm happy for him. He's doing really well. Um, what did you have? So so this is like like I said, this is my this is my my bear, uh, and I, he doesn't have a fancy name. His name is Bear. Um, and I used to have a yellow blanket, and I would just walk around the house saying "Blanket Bear, Blanket Bear." And uh, it's funny because I shared a picture of this bear online and I thought it was like really special and unique. I mean, it's special and unique to me, but then like they were just droves of people that were just like, I had the same bear, I had the same bear. And I'm like, what? Like, no, this is my bear. And you find out there's like 50 other people and it was like a mass produced thing that they, you know, that was like big in like, you know, the seventies. And I'm like, but it's my bear. Anyway, so I had this funny story. Um, <laughs> So the funny, the story was, uh, I think my parents got to a point where, uh, you know, they they wanted they wanted to go out and do things, uh, but they didn't want me to carry the blanket and the bear everywhere I want. It was just like a it was just like a moment where they're just like, you know, hey, we can't bring blanket and bear everywhere. You know, you're growing up. <laughs> I think I was only like I think I was only like three, and they're just like, it's time for you to grow up. You can't have blanket or bear everywhere you go. And I remember. Uh, it was one day we were going to the mall. We were going to the mall and my parents said, well, if you decide to bring Bear, then we can't go to the mall. But if we go to the mall, you have to, you have to leave Bear here. So you have to decide. And my mom, it was funny because my mom straight up was just like, I just looked at Bear, I'm like, sorry, I gotta go. And I just like, <laughs> and like that was it. Like I was just done with the Bear. But you know, I, I still have this guy I still have this guy and uh, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't smell or anything. So that's really good. Like I've had him and he's in pretty good shape. Um, I don't know if you have any uh, wonderful story about your bear or, or you know, like I'm kind of curious cause it has like these little scratches on its belly. Like, I don't know if it was yeah. made like that or. No, or I think this is probably just due to a lot of love and I, <laughs> I had it from birth. So definitely the, the bear is a tissue and the bear is a snack. I bet I was just like sucking on him, <laughs> chewing on him. Um, it's a puppet, which is- Oh, which, I didn't know that, okay. Yeah, so it's kind of, I think my mom used to play a lot with, oh, that's with sweet. bear and did voices. Um, so this is Teddy. Um, and then I have some other of my my childhood ant stuffed animals. One of my favorites was Gorzini, which is, he was the star of all my stories, and I had a comic strip, uh, which is a gorilla, and then uh, I had- Wait, his, I'm sorry, you drew your own comics? Like, where can we see these comics? <laughs> They're not, uh, <laughs> I don't have them every, I show them at my school events. I should have uh, had some slides to show. That's awesome. Uh, another one that's really special to me is a giant gorilla. That's Bubba, that was Gorzini's bro big brother, and, uh, he was won for me by my dad at uh, an amusement park. I think it was doing like either the ping pong ball toss or the ring toss. Um, so I remember coming home from the amusement park with that big gorilla and that was pretty fun and special. And that's another great thing about stuffies. Like I don't have my, my father anymore, um, but I still have my stuffy and I still have those memories that are, are very special to me and that's, that's so cool how inanimate objects kind of carry those memories and right. uh, stories with them. Um, I'm not the type, of, I do like, I don't have a ton of clutter, but I love trinkets and I love like holding on to special things that have those memories. So mm -hmm. stuffed animals um, kind of 
are a big part of that for me. I do have a funny story about my bear. Uh, when I told my mom that I was going to have a book with you and I talked to you up as like the Michael Jordan of illustrators. <laughs> like, kind of, well, when you're talking to people that like my mom, it was an educator, but she, she wasn't in like the book world or, or anything like that. So when I'm trying to like tell people that don't quite know about like certain aspects of the book world, I try to like, right. well, how should I put it into terms? I was like, well, Dan Stan has like at the, the top of the top for children's uh, literature, like Michael Jordan or something like that. But I was he's telling like, he's her- like John Starks. He's like John Starks. He starts on the bench and then like works his way in in the third quarter. <laughs> that was in 1992. <laughs> not, not the year that uh, the only average 9.2 points. <laughs> But guess what? He's done 120 books. So, you yeah. know, he's, he's been in the league for a long time. <laughs> so she was like so pumped. And I was like, oh, I, I want to like use my, I want to use Teddy for like um, promotional materials. So she went like looking in her boxes, boxes, because she thought she had it. And she was so worried because she had just gotten rid of some stuffed animals cleaning okay. out. She had my, younger brother like looked through him while he was at the house and was like, do you want any of these for your children? And he's like, oh, I took these and I don't, I don't, I didn't really ever play with those. So you can donate them. So she went and donated this bag of stuffed animals. And then she's, when she's looking for Teddy, then later she's like, oh my gosh, I think I gave him, I must have given him away because he's nowhere here. He would be in my like little keepsake box if he, if he was. So she was like devastated. She like messaged me kind of like teary, like crying a little bit. She's like, I'm so sorry. I know you wanted to show your bear um, <laughs> for your book, but I think I gave them away. And I had read her the story. So she felt even worse because it was like, he was now forgotten and <laughs> just like devastated. Uh, so she found the exact same bear uh, on eBay and she bought it for me. So it's just crazy to see, I had the bear the whole time. Okay. Uh, you didn't know, but it's so crazy to see the difference between this is what the bear was and this is what yeah, that's the bear a was after all the that. Wow. Yeah. So it looks completely, well, not completely different, but uh, which goes even to show at the end of the book about like bear being um, torn and and just like full of, still full of love, but you can see like what our stuffies go through. Right, right. No, that's amazing. But so yeah. Mr. Mr. But, Mr. Stutzman, he he got me this giant bear. Let me let me uh this is it came in a oh my gosh it came in a box and it's like it's literally the size it's the size of a six year old. <laughs> so you know it's just funny it came in the box and, um, you know, he's pretty hefty. Now everyone's asking me what to name the bear. So if you have any ideas of what to name the bear, go ahead and put that in the chat window. Right now, <laughs> I'm just thinking of the name of Java. <laughs> you know, I'm open to any other suggestions for the name of the bear. But um, as time goes on, since we've been doing so many video broadcasts and stuff like that, I just thought, like, I would just leave him here on the couch. And, and like, every time you see me doing a new presentation, you probably see the bear. and now you'll remember the story of how I got the bear. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's very, You're very welcome. fantastic uh, bear. Um, is there anything you want to add? Should I should I do a drawing demonstration? Should we? Do you have any other questions or? Nothing so, I want to add, but I I would love to see you draw. I'll draw along too with you. All right. So, folks, if you are around any crayons and paper. Or, or what have you, we can uh, start by doing my little drawing demonstration. I like to uh, generally just talk about how, how much fun and how easy it is to draw. You can basically draw anything you want with letters and shapes. Um, a lot of the times when you're drawing, uh, things can just be expressed as a symbol. So like, for example, one of the most popular symbols is a circle. Um, but you use your imagination to fill in the blanks. Uh, so I can tell you that I just drew you, I just drew you uh, a hole. I just drew you a ball. Uh, if I drew 
uh, a circle over that. I have just drawn you the Death Star from Star Wars. And a lot of it is just kind of expressing um, expressing these ideas with information. So if it's not clear, I can just add more information to just make the message more, more understandable. So if I drew this and you didn't know it was a, the Death Star, then I could just add more circles and, and uh, now you have TIE fighters coming out of that ship, for instance. Um, one of the great things about one of the great things about uh, drawing is that you can combine a lot of other shapes uh, with with other symbols and create different objects. So if I did like a cloud, for instance, um, if you go outside, you know, clouds don't typically look like this uh, because this is a symbol of a cloud. But if I wanted to communicate that it was a rain cloud, then I could just have raindrops coming out of it like that. And lo and behold, you are drawing you're drawing um, a raining cloud. But I could also take that same exact shape uh, and then put, I could just put a rectangle underneath it. And now you have a tree. And so you're communicating uh, different, that's my wife, everyone, say hi. Yay, okay, she, she came and <laughs> didn't want to interrupt our presentation. Um, so you can take the same shapes and then you can just pair them up and repurpose them in different ways. Um, so I, I've taken this cloud, I turned it into a rain cloud, now I've turned it into a tree. Now, if I wanted to start combining shapes, uh, you can do all kinds of magical things. So for example, um, you know what, the, the alphabet is actually a very powerful way uh, to draw whatever you want. So let's draw, let's draw uh, a witch. So let's start with the letter V, okay? So I've got, I've got this, I've got the shape for this head, and then I'm going to put another letter V right on top of that, like so, okay? And now what you can kind of see is that I have drawn a diamond, and then I'll just put a, a line in between that, and now I've made a witch's hat, okay? So let me just make a, let me just make a list of letters that I've used. So I've used the letter V. Uh, we'll say that witch's brim is the letter I. And then I can use the letter B and turn that sideways. And now she's got these angry eyes. Okay. And then I can use the letter O to make some eyeballs. Uh, the letter J makes a really nice witch's nose. And, and then we can use the letter M for her surly witch's mouth. And then uh, just a cloud shape for her hair, like so. Okay. And then there you go. We've got we've got a witch, and it only took one, two, three, four, five, six letters and a, and a cloud shape. So that's that's really how you can draw anything you want. So let's let's say you want to practice and say you want to get better. Let's see. So I have my little coffee mug right here. My my favorite coffee, Mr. Santat's favorite coffee mug. So if you want to draw something like this, you can break it down into the basic shapes, letters, or what have you. So if we're looking at the coffee mug. Uh, we could say that the body of the coffee mug is the letter U, like so. Okay, and then and then the top of the mug is a circle, and then and then we just put the circle on top of there. And the funny thing is that I'm not a big fan of perspective. I, I don't think things have to look perfect. I think the wonkier it looks, the better it is. Uh, then we have this handle here for the mug, and that looks like the letter C. So we just put the letter C on the side, like so. And voila, you've made. You've made Mr. Santat's favorite coffee mug. Oh, we'll, we'll add a circle. We'll add the circle here just for the the, in the, the great logo for the Art Center College of Design, the, the, fighting, the fighting orange dots. Uh, we have not quite made it into March Madness, but uh, you know, someday, someday we will be able to take on Duke and probably get annihilated by 80 points. Um, so that's... That's basically how you draw things and break them down into basic shapes. So let's take, let's take my little bear here and let's break that down and you'll see how easy it is to actually draw your own best friend. So uh, if we were to break this down, my, my, my friend's head is a circle, okay? So we've got my friend's head here, it's a circle. And then we can look at the body as also another circle.
And then uh, the limbs, the, the arms and legs, they're kind of variations of circles. They're like these oval baguette kind of shapes. And so I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put these little shapes here. And it, as you can see so far, we've already gotten a pretty good idea going here just by using really one shape. In fact, this is the funny part. What I'm looking at here, I can probably draw this entire bear just using variations of circles. So we've got the body, and then those are really round ears. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the bear's ears here, and they're they're very they're very round like so, almost almost like Mickey Mouseish. Uh, the mouth, the muzzle, the little mouth of our bear here is a circle. The nose of the bear, way up on his forehead, is also a circle. And then the eyes are also a circle. And then the little bear pupils are circles, like so. And then he's got a really round tongue, I'm just sticking out like, like, there. So that's a pretty good... That's a pretty good depiction of my bear. And if you wanted to go even further and just add a little texture, just, you know, put like little lines there to express fur. And, and you know, just voila, like you've, you've drawn, you've drawn my bear covered in fur. And it really just comes down to how much detail you want to add. You can keep going on and on. You really, the key to drawing really is to start big and then work your way into smaller shapes and just defining the smaller details um, like so. But there you have it. I have just drawn, I've drawn my bear. And um, I think if you guys took the time to look at anything complicated, you could break them down and figure like simple shapes and figure that out. And so voila, here we are, all done. I have I've just drawn you my bear. And that that is that concludes our little drawing demonstration. Um, I guess now would be a fantastic time to take some questions. I'll take I guess Jonathan and I will take questions about the book. I think we'll take any questions, really. Yeah. yeah. So uh, feel free to put them in the chat window. Let's see if we have, uh, let's see. Oh, fantastic, John. No. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's see. The first question, is anyone else having issues? The answer is no. I, I don't have any issues right now. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Broman's Live. Uh, <laughs> feel free to, let's see. Uh, and, oh, wait, here we go. Ask a question. Is that what I'm pressing here? Ah, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What did you both eat for breakfast? What is your favorite cereal? And does the bear eat breakfast? So what did, what did you... I had a slice of pie this morning because I ran four miles. I still feel guilty. But uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, I just had, like, scrambled eggs with a bagel. Um, but I do love cereal. And... I, there's this, it's very random, but a, a very, uh, just a generic grocery store brand of Frosted Flakes. And it's just amazing. It's so good. And that's like my go-to like snack if I ever want to treat myself. And it's, uh, it's really why, good. Why generic Frosted Flakes then? I, this brand is just so good. <laughs> <laughs> the texture, the flavor, it's just amazing. I, I can't explain it. I even went back to the regular Frosted Flakes and like other different generic like grocery store brands. And this specific one is the best of all of them. Okay, my favorite cereal is Raisin Bran Crunch. Um, but, so it was funny because when I was growing up, my parents never let me eat sugary cereals. And I was always eating, like my parents had me, <laughs> I was like a weird kid. Like I was growing up on grape nuts and stuff like that. And like, yeah, and like fiber one. Like my dad was like, fiber is very important. And I'm like an eight year old kid. Uncle Sam? 
You know what? I was just told about Uncle Sam for the first time, and I'm like, who names their cereal Uncle Sam? And then I Googled it, and I'm like, oh, this is a thing, Uncle Sam cereal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, I'm very familiar. And it was fun because, like, I was going, I was going to uh, the grocery store, and I was just looking at all the sugary cereals, and I just had this total Kaiser Soze moment where I realized, Oh, the biggest lie that the entire breakfast industry has is to tell you that cereal is good for you because you're looking at it and you're like, oh, there's there's literally like Oreo cereal where it's just like these little tiny Oreos, but you put them in milk and we're good to go. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is insane. I have to have a box, you know? So that was just dumb. So does your does your bear eat breakfast? Mine, mine, mine subsists on um Mine subsists on a, a steady diet of my of my tears. That's, that's my <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely in my mind as a kid, they they all had meals and stuff. I would think that maybe Teddy's favorite cereal is Boo Berries. Um, okay, that's your favorite of the three holiday cereals: the the between Frankenberry and Count Chocula, and then Boo Berry. Well, I would think that because it's a bear. Because it don't the bears like berries? Oh, I was, I'm just guessing. I need to ask Teddy later. Um, but I, I'm very excited for all the seasonal cereals that are coming in. Um, I, I love the box designs and stuff. They're they're very nostalgic to me. So I just saw that display and I was like, oh yeah, they got all the cereals coming. Are you are you a pumpkin spice kind of guy? Are you excited or are you just kind of like, oh, pumpkin spice is disgusting? I generally don't drink it. But I just had a pumpkin spice coffee, like a hot coffee, and I yeah. really enjoyed it. So maybe it's a new me this this fall. I <laughs> no, because Cheerios came out with the pumpkin spice Cheerios, okay. and, I, and I said, okay, I'm game. And I I inhaled that box in three days. It was like it was like family size. It was family size. I'm just ah, I ate the whole thing. That's the problem with cereal. Like yeah. Yeah, I could, I could eat a whole box in one sitting or maybe two sittings because you're just like, oh, I have too much milk now. I have to put more cereal and then you put too much cereal and then you have to put more milk in. Then you have too much milk at the end. It's just like this never ending cycle. <laughs> right. You're there all day. I'm never going to my ratios. <laughs> all right. Next question. Uh, what are you both working on next? Let's begin with you. What are you working on right now? Um, well, I am working on book three of my graphic novel series that I'm doing with Heather, um, Fitz and Cleo. I have another mm -hmm. Tiny T-Rex book coming out, another Llama book, and um, Isabel Arsenal, who I love as an illustrator. I'm doing a book with her called The Mouse Who Carried a House on His Back. Um, mm -hmm. So those are going to be coming out next year. Got it, got it. What about you, Dan? I so I have various things that I'm working on. Uh, one, I have a I have a graphic novel that I've spent the last ten years on, uh, coming out from Scholastic, and it's called The Aquanaut. Uh, and that one is about uh, these little tiny sea creatures that um, take an old diving suit and then they convert it into a land walking device uh, in hopes of finding. Uh, this marine reserve on land, which is like a sea world, because uh, they think that it will be uh, this little Shangri-La for them to uh, be safe from the dangers of the ocean. Uh, and there's a much deeper story about the loss of a captain and he meets the brother and, and the daughter of the captain who went down in the ship. Uh, and it's about and it's about uh, loss and just kind of re regrounding yourself and finding out who your family is. Uh, I'm currently working, I'm finishing up uh, another graphic novel. It's a, it's a memoir uh, about when I was 13 years old and I took a three week trip through Europe. And um, it really is just a coming of age story about me just kind of learning to like myself, uh, especially after the tough years of junior high. Uh, on the picture book front, uh, I have a picture book coming out that I have done with uh, this author, Laurel Snyder. Uh, and it's a choose your own adventure picture book where you get to take on the role of Little Red Riding Hood and then uh, you get to choose which path she goes. And so one of the first questions was, okay, well, she wants to get dressed. Do you want to wear the red cloak? Do you want to wear the red hood? Or, or do you want to wear like this furry bear shaped uh, jacket? And you know, it's like little things like that. So that's a lot of fun. Um, 
I have another picture book coming out next year that was written by Min Lei, uh, and it's called The Blur, and, and that one celebrates, like you'll have these graduation books, like, you know, all oh, the places you'll go, and, um, you know, all these other books about like, hey, you're going off and, you know, challenge the world and gay you. Uh, the Blur is a little bit different where uh, it's kind of celebrating uh, the child and family and all the moments that it took to get to that moment. Uh, but also it's a double meaning because you realize how quickly all those years went by. It was a blur. Um, so I've got that going on. And then uh, right now I'm working on, you know, I'm working on some picture books. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually in the process of outlining my, my first middle grade novel, uh, which is something that it's been stewing in my head for the last 10 years. And, um, I'm finally, I'm finally uh, unleashing that. Uh, that like just something got unstuck, and and and, and I'm, I'm moving forward with that. And uh, working on other picture book ideas, but right now, like my head's firmly uh, engrossed in graphic novels, which you know they take a long time to do. But after you do one, you're like you're just you're you're addicted. Okay, so great novel. That, that congrats on the middle grade novel. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it's, um, you know, so the, the middle grade novel idea, it, it has to do with a lot of urban legends here in L.A. So uh, if you've ever come to L.A., like, there's just all these crazy pockets that have, like, these old stories, one of which is, you know, you see these green parrots flying all over L.A., and no one knows where they came from. There's, like, three or four different stories about them, and, you know, I've just been, like, doing research about L.A. for years and years and years, and, and then you just have this whole bucket and then, you know, like I'm trying to take all these urban legends and just tie them into one giant story. And so that's that's really where the heavy lifting comes from is getting the information. And then you sit there and you're trying to sort through which ones are are, are useful for you for your story. But, you know, that's what we got in here. So uh, the, here's a great question. Favorite sports teams? I know you and I can be at odds about this a little bit because, uh, you know, we uh, so let's see. Um, I mean, so when we go on social media, I, I, I know sometimes I can just scream out things about sports. I'll just tweet about sports, and I realize that in the kid lit world, I think you and I are probably the only people that actually watch sports. So, but you do find a lot about you know. sports because I'm like, no one wants to hear what I'm about to say. Right, right. I'm just You're like, right. like yeah. Lingard, and they're like, who, what? You know, like, tell me more about your stories. Uh, so let's just go down the list. Uh, favorite football team? Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay. All right. So yeah, um, it was a long road of failure for most of my life. <laughs> right. 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 It was one of those things where you thought, like, I'll never see my favorite team win a Super Bowl, and then lo and behold, you know, they they get they get the Super Bowl last year. My favorite team was the L.A. Raiders, which is really. Oh, that's sad. You lost them. It is. It's sad. It's sad. It's one of these things where I'm like, hey, we had the glory days. And then after that, it was just like, well, now we're the we're the heel of the entire league. And, you know, it's just expected that we just make horrible decisions and we make stupid plays. And so, um, but also, let's see, uh, you are a basketball fan? Yep. And so, uh, I, uh, Chicago Bulls, because of Michael Jordan growing up. Um, okay. So I I don't like follow as passionately as I do other sports. Um, uh -huh. I always watch the NCAA tournament and okay. I love basketball. Um, Who's your NCAA team? Who do you cheer for in NCAA? I don't really have any team that I specifically love. I just, I generally love all the underdog teams. Um, just that, or like teams I follow their storylines and like I hear about like certain players or coach and just the right, story right. of it is really cool. What about you? Uh, I've been a huge Lakers fan for my entire life. And honestly, you know, growing up in the 80s where you just kind of went through the motions of just like, this is funny that we're watching a regular season because we know it's going to be Lakers and Celtics at the end of the year, you know, and then you would sit there and it would just, it would just be neck and neck, like down to the last second, all series, you know? Um, and, you know, one of my favorite players was Magic Johnson. And I actually got to meet Magic Johnson at one point. It just melted my brain. It was just amazing. Um, so, yeah. And then, uh, let's see, other sports. You follow ice hockey? I like watching, again, the uh, playoffs, but I'm not as, like, passionate. I, like, had it went through a huge hockey phase as a kid with Mighty Ducks. I okay. got, like, roller blades at a garage sale, like, right, right, right. one year. And uh, so I was really into hockey in NHL uh, 96 and all those hockey games, uh, which I love. But, yeah, I, 
I, I it's one of those things where I, I really enjoy watching like playoffs and watching compete, but I don't actually follow a certain team. Right, right. So I'm a Chicago Blackhawks fan. Oh, uh, nice. And everyone kind of scratches their head, like, you live in L.A., why do you like the Chicago Blackhawks? Uh, it's because I actually played hockey for a number of years. It started in high school, uh, and I played goaltender. And when I started playing hockey, Eddie Belfour was the, was the rookie goaltender for the Chicago Blackhawks. And, like, that year, he just lit up the league. Like, he, you know, he won the Vezina, he won the Calder. He, you know, like, they were favored to win the Stanley Cup. And so Eddie Belfour really was, like, my favorite player for, uh, for all these years. And then, like, the Chicago Blackhawks just stuck with me. Uh, not to say that I'm not a huge Kings fan. Um, you know, like, I loved watching Wayne Gretzky and Luke Robitaille and all those other players. But what really annoyed me were L.A. fans who were just kind of seasonal fans who only knew who Wayne Gretzky was, but they didn't know anything else about the rest of the team. So it would be a little frustrating. Um, but, um, you know, here we are years later. I have, a, I have an author friend named Cecil Castellucci. And she and I, we have, like, a little Kings hockey package. And then we go out to games uh, and then we just talk shop and we just, you know, like talk about life and things like that while we're watching uh, our, our Kings be horribly demolished by, you know, any other team. They're kind of going through a, a rough phase. I think that's just kind of. You have a big Buccaneer phase? Yeah, it's just my lot in life. Like all, so here was the crazy thing because there was a period where my favorite teams won the Stanley Cups for five years straight. It was like oh, the wow. Blackhawks won, and then it was the Kings, and then the Blackhawks, and then the Kings, and then the Blackhawks again. And I was like, I've watched my favorite teams win Stanley Cup for five straight years, and now they're like the two worst teams in the league. And it's just like, oh, remember those good old days when I could watch you know, every year and one of my teams would win the Stanley Cup? So those days are gone. Um, and then you and I are big, we're, we're big football fans, soccer fans. Oh, yeah, fans. I love it so much, yeah. So who's your, who's your favorite team? Um, I don't have like a specific Premier League team that I love. I just like watching uh, the games. World Cup is like one of my favorite sporting events ever. Oh, watching it. Um, and then I decided, I was like, well, I'm not going to be up. It's hard to like be up for all the Premier League games because they're always at weird time schedules. So uh, right, I just right. wanted to pick an MLS team like about six, seven years ago. And I love the Portland Timbers uh, because I love Portland as like a – just like um, the area and the town. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been like now a diehard Portland Timbers fan for about four or five years. Um, so that, that's been fun. Uh, yeah. It's not on the like the level of the Premier League, but it, I feel like anything can happen in an MLS game. So it's pretty fun. For me, watching MLS is like watching a Premier League game and then slowing it down 50%. You know, <laughs> like, oh, that's that's adorable. Because we would have these things where um, at the Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, uh, they would have these friendlies and uh, they would have the LA Galaxy playing, you know, some really big team from, from Europe. So, you know, one year Manchester United came out and they were playing against the Galaxy and all the Galaxy players were like sprinting all over like, ah, ah, ah. and meanwhile, like, Wayne Rooney is just like jogging around, mm, goal, mm, goal, you know. And then like one another year, like Barcelona came out and Iniesta was out there, and you could see like he was just like maybe now is a good time for me to experiment with some fun moves, and he just do like these amazing moves and just like look bored, uh, but at the same time also scoring two goals. So um, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm a big football fan. Uh, let's see, uh, here's another question, Dan. Need to know why you named your dog Indiana. Um, and it's because uh, my family and I could not agree on a name for a dog. And so uh, I just went with the old classic Indiana Jones, like we named the dog Indiana. And so he was just in the room a moment ago. He is not here anymore, but that's why I named the dog Indiana. And uh, a question for you. What was the generic brand of Frosted Flakes that you were referring to? Oh, uh, Weiss Markets. Um, you probably don't have them on the West Coast. But they're right, 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 right. I love, I love the name of all these food like places, like Food Lion. I don't do yeah. you have Food Lion. Yeah. My group Wiggly, Wiggly. Wiggly. Yeah. And they have Food Lion there, and they did not have it when I moved to Pennsylvania. So, I uh, definitely had it for about ten years of my life. Farm <laughs> Fresh and Food Lion, and Farm Fresh, I realize, is not very fresh when you move to Pennsylvania. <laughs> land of farm. <laughs> You're like, these are gamey. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, I guess that's 
I guess that's it. Thank you very much for coming out. Is there anything else you want to add, Jonathan? Oh, I see someone went to E-Town, which is awesome. Uh, hello to oh. hello. Uh, uh They were in Central PA, I guess, in their college years. I don't know if they live there now. But yeah, I live in Lidditz area. And hello, Renee Carilla. For those of you who uh, are fans of picture books, Renee Carilla uh, here in the chat. She is also a children's book author, illustrator. You can check her books out. She's fantastic. Yay. Hi, Renee. Very nice to see you. Thanks for coming out. And also, I mentioned the Tiny T-Rex books, but I didn't say the illustrator, who's amazing, and his name is Jay Fleck. Um, so I didn't want to, I had that in the back of my mind. I was like, I got to give a shout to Jay because he's awesome. Um, and too often, we forget the illustrators who do amazing stuff. So, like, Dan, Bear is a bear. Like, you exceeded my expectations that oh, I could thank you. have. Thank you. Well, or hopefully, we can work on something again in the future. Sounds good. I'll send you five manuscripts at the end of the day. I'm just like, what? <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> I'll send you some frosted flakes too, and that'll that'll like soothe it. Only over. the Weiss, the Weiss flakes. Only the Weiss brand. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, you guys. This was wonderful story time. I really enjoyed it. I think our audience really enjoyed it. You guys are not only hilarious, but you're great storytellers. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you. That's why we did purchase the book. Yeah. 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 Purchase the book. You get signed book plates. Um, to make sure you get that signed book plate, put in the comments area of the book purchase that you want that signed book plate. And thank you all for showing up. I really enjoyed your keynote also, Dan. That was brilliant. Thank yeah, you. and and I'm very jealous of the big bear. You know, I think I'm gonna hollow it out and it'll be my Halloween outfit. Just <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we'll have to do a, a middle grade horror book next. Right, right. Just five nights at Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different book. That's a, that's just a fill it with book. other little teddy bears, and then you open it up and like ton of little baby bears come out. And like, <laughs> I'm covering Teddy's ears, so he doesn't have to do this horror <laughs> show. <laughs> and hello, Anita. I saw uh, Anita said hello. She's amazing. She's such a good friend and an amazing filmmaker. So I'm glad she was here as well. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming out from yeah. everywhere and uh, listening to us babble and also sharing with us. This is our first story time of Bear is a Bear. So I'm, I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. This the was book. the first time that you guys have it done is, this? Yes. this yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're very natural. It just didn't seem like it at all. I practiced one time before the event. <laughs> <laughs> I, better, I don't even know what I wrote. I don't think I read it. Uh, I generally am scared of reading my words when the new book comes. I like went look through the pictures. I was like, "Oh, Dan's amazing," but I like try not to read what I wrote because I feel so self conscious about it half the time. So that was the first time last night I read it, and I was like, "You know, this is not too bad." I'm not a fan How of my. How many own times words. did you guys? Sorry. No, How I was just saying. I'm not a fan of my very, very nasally. What's that? How did we what? How many times did you guys go back and forth on like the drawing for the bear? The, like how many times did you have to draw a bear for it to be like, okay, this is the one? Oh, no, I kind of just dove right. I already had like a clear idea in my head of what bear was going to be like. So yeah, I just, I just jumped right into it, which is natural. There was, there was a period where I thought I wanted to incorporate my orange bear into it. This, this, but like, I mean, I'll be honest, I love my bear, but that face is a little psychotic. <laughs> so it didn't quite work out and like the whole idea of a <laughs> giant orange bear just going out throughout this book like be my friend you know uh so i said let's let's try to make this a more natural looking bear uh and i love drawing bears so the bear you drew was beautiful because yeah. there's so yeah. many bears out there but you somehow created a unique iconic bear that just looks like you want to fall into their arms and you just want to cuddle it it's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 
Mm-hmm. All right. You're well, this is. Gonna... Sorry, I cut you off. No. <laughs> no, 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 no all right. So, I think this is a wrap. <laughs> what do you think? I think this is a wrap. Thank you, everyone. Please stay safe. Uh, be well. Yes. If there's teachers and librarians out there, thank you very much for all that you do. Go find thank your you stuffy guys. friends and give them a hug. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go get a big, big bear. I'm jealous of that one. Now I want one, so I'm going to get one. Where did you, you get go. the big bear, Jonathan? Just like Amazon? Bears.com. I I looked up a couple of places. It was supposed to come on the day our book uh, came out. <laughs> but it, it came to me. <laughs> so annoying. I even rechecked the shipping address and I had hands, but they sent it to the billing address. <laughs> I just got this big box and I was like, well, there there goes that. Yeah. It to myself. <laughs> Dave's like, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> you deserve it. Yay. Go, go Buccaneers. <laughs> the Buccaneers. All right, guys. Thank you very much. And everybody in our audience, thank you very much. And Yay. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you very afternoon. much. Take care, everyone. Yep. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.